Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome to the WP Builds podcast once more. Thanks for coming back. This is episode number 247, entitled T is for Themes. It was published on Thursday the 16th of September 2021. My name's Nathan Wrigley and in a few short minutes I'll be joined, as I so often am, by David Wormsley. This week we're going to be talking, as I said, about themes. We'll get to that in just a moment. But before then, I would love to tell you a few things that are going on in the WP Build space. Firstly, I'd like to mention that we've got a website. You probably knew this already, but it's over at wpbuilds.com. There you're going to find all the content that we produce. We do the This Week in WordPress show. Comes out live on a Monday, 2 p.m. UK time. You can find that at wpbuilds.com forward slash live. And we also put that out in a newsletter on Tuesday. So we repurpose it and put it out for your delectation on Tuesday. If you'd like to be notified about that and the podcast each Thursday that you're listening to now, head over to wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe and you'll be able to join a mailing list, find our Facebook group, YouTube channel, Twitter feed and all of that stuff. So that's wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe. Another thing to mention is that we are running the Page Builder Summit again. It's actually happening in about a month's time, something like that. It's at pagebuildersummit.com, and if you'd like to be informed and get on the wait list, please head over to pagebuildersummit.com, and we will let you know when we produce our list of speakers and so on and so forth. It's looking like it's going to be genuinely a really good event again. We've got loads of nice stuff lined up. So once more, pagebuildersummit.com for that. If you would like to find out about deals in the WordPress space, we've got a boatload of them curated on one page. It's wpbuilds.com forward slash deals. I keep likening it to Black Friday, but every day of the week, wpbuilds.com forward slash deals will get you coupon codes off plugins, themes, and all sorts of other things. And the last one that I want to mention is wpbuilds.com forward slash advertise. If you would like to get your product or service in front of a WordPress specific audience, a bit like A-B split test. Do you want to set up your A-B split test in record time? The A-B split test plugin for WordPress will have you up and running in a couple of minutes. You can use your existing pages and test anything against anything else. That could be buttons, images, headers, rows, really anything. And the best part is it works with Elementor, Beaver Builder and the WordPress block editor. So go check it out and get a free demo. absplittest.com Alrighty, let's get on to the main event of this week. It's David Wormsley and myself having a chat. T is for theme. We're going through the alphabet, as you're about to find out. We're near the end now, as you can tell. We're going from A right the way through to Z or Z, depending on where you are in the world. And this week, we are tackling the subject of themes, which is a really critical component in WordPress. You can't really run it without a theme, or can you? What have themes done in the past? What have they enabled us to do? And what does the future look like? for themes. It's a little bit of a difficult time if you're a theme developer, what with full site editing and all of that coming around the corner into core. Anyway, I hope that you enjoy the podcast. Hello, it's another A to Z of WordPress, the series where we attempt to cover all the major aspects of building and maintaining sites with WordPress. Today is T for themes. So... Nathan, We're running out of letters. Topic. Have you noticed? We started this yeah. what felt like yesterday... With A is for, I don't even remember what we did for A, but we did A is for Apple or something like that. And um, and, and here we are on T, fast approaching the end of the alphabet. Good grief. I I know this one's a tricky one because what a theme is, is what we're going to get into. But maybe we'll start a little bit with a kind of history of themes where we got to, uh, where we started off. So in the beginning was the WordPress. Oh, (laughs) nicely done, yeah. themes (laughs) themes <laughs> that's oh. all we had in the beginning of the wordpress though wasn't it you need and still is today we need what is technically a theme to run wordpress so everything was a theme in the early days yep yep and yeah um, like you said it's just two simple little files that you need and without those you're you're in dire straits 
Yeah, I know. Just one index file and one styles.css file defines their theme. And then after that, it's up to anyone whether they want to carry on building from the theme up or from the plugin. So mostly we're talking about semantics here. But I think the early stages of it, and the, you've told me this before, the reason that WordPress appealed to you is because it looked nicer. You could just kind of install a theme and things were looking pretty in the first place. And I think that's where themes came in and that we still, I think, do you, what do you think a theme is? Do you still think it is primarily there to style the look of your site? Yeah, in my head, that's what it should be. Obviously, that's not what it is because the, the world and uh, his wife sort of carried on <laughs> and, and fiddled with it and made it into a whole bunch of stuff, which we'll get into. But in my mind, the the aspiration would be that anything to do with the way it looks so the stuff yeah. that your eyes pick up is the theme and anything yeah. to do with the way that it behaves. So the stuff that goes into the way it looks is the domain of, well, content, WordPress itself and plugins. So that, that would be my, my definition. And I, I think the world would be an easier place if every, everything stuck to that. But of course it didn't. It was, um, you know, there's almost no difference between what a plugin is and what a theme is on a, on a sort of nuanced yeah. level. And so the two overlap, you know, you've got themes which do a whole bunch of plugin functionality and plugins which do a whole load of theme functionality. And so it's confusing and it must be really, really confusing for somebody who comes to WordPress and just wants to know, well, why do I need a theme and what does a plugin do? Because they're basically the same. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like my journey feels a little bit like it's the one that would be expected if you were part of the WordPress community. So I kind of didn't really see what was going on with marketplaces like Theme Forest and they were they were advancing stuff. So I generally wandered into those early themes where they first ones with a premium offering um, and then moving into kind of Genesis. So there were basic things there and they did what I thought a theme should do. So the style sheet was styled and then you added in your um, child theme to be able to style that you know change the styles of that original styling that was there and it took care of basic um, formatting the layout excuse me I need to cough <clears throat> for okay. yeah, yeah. your pages yeah and your yeah. post so they were taking care of all the PHP templates as they needed to be then of course we're rapidly changing away from those and and that's what I knew but then even there even with something as simple as Genesis this kind of what called itself a framework because effectively lots of snippets allowed you to do things and they were sharing those but even there it nudged its way into adding some SEO in that was should have been the domain of a plugin uh, and you know as we saw it then so it's just interesting but yeah Theme Forest on the other hand they've always gone down this kind of big root of you know you go and buy this one thing they need to sell one product don't they it you need to have a theme so it makes sense that all of the plugins that you're going to need for that theme are either going to be baked into it or are going to be an instant install yeah and uh, i guess so in a sense i suppose if you could rewind the history of wordpress it might be it might have been a good idea to really separate those two things out and make it absolutely incumbent upon theme developers that they just touched the way it looks and on plugin developers the way it behaves. But um, but yeah, you're right. I'm curious that you you know you use things like Genesis. It's it's just ever so slightly straying into plugin territory yeah. with SEO, and it kind of almost feels like it isn't. But then you've got you've got plugins and themes let's say for example on the genus generate press side of things where they they separate that out and you know you've obviously yeah. got your your premium version where the the plugins that you can install the add-ons the pro side of things they definitely do deal with the way it behaves and the the theme itself is just about the way it looks yeah it's very i think it sticks to that original view of what we thought themes were about uh, it, it's held true to that and but i mean it's it's really, isn't it? It's page builders taking off, really. I mean, there was a, a bit before 2014, but from 2014 on, I believe the page builders have really taken on to this present day. And as soon as you've got Beaver Builder, particularly um, you know, developing the Beaver Thema, which was a theme builder, then every page builder after that since has really pretty much got that. So now theme building is something that's done by a plugin on the whole. So... 
Yeah, um, and it's we've got to the point really where if you install a page builder, you you have everything that you need to to create the way it looks and the way it behaves. I mean, obviously there's there's going to be additional things that you wish to add as plugins to create additional functionality, but everything's all in one to the point where you start to question what is the purpose going forward of a theme if everything has been abstracted and you don't really yeah. need to interact with it on a theme setting level you you do question and of course we'll come into that what's the what's the future and, and more recently yeah. there's been a few posts put out by people who make themes questioning what's going on and and who's in charge and what's the future yeah, our theme's dead. Well, this one's come up so many times. So we'll park that one, shall we, while we talk about the, what we yeah. think are the different types of themes. So this is kind of rough and ready, but we started with kind of sections. We thought about frameworks first. So when I thought I might be a bit of a wannabe developer in the early days, I heard of these kind of frameworks where you could build your own themes. In fact, I built my own theme from a blog post years back, but there were also frameworks like underscores, which really were just for the coders where you could just build from that. Do you, they must right. be dead now, So did you, they? what, you just followed a tutorial, did you, back in the day to yeah. build yourself a thing? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It, it was really simple. Um, I wish I could remember the guy's name. Um, I don't know what happened to him. He was hugely popular when I uh, went into WordPress about sort of 2006, 2007. He just seem to be the only person writing really handy articles on you know working with things that i could understand as a non-developer i yeah. can understand how to put yeah. one together yeah, yeah and i'll tell you what if, you, if you figure out who that guy is then i'll stick yeah. it in the show notes yeah oh yeah I'll, I'll try and find him yeah um and there was and something i've not used have you used it underscores no and i keep hearing it i keep well not so much now, but I heard about it. it. Just kept coming up over and over and over again. But you know, busy life, normal working conditions <laughs> yeah. mean that I just didn't have time to fiddle with it. So I, I don't really know what its promise was and why people were raving about it. Yeah, and I think then there was it, clusters frameworks, which is really just a fancy word for a theme that's got a few pretensions, I guess. Um, Genesis. There was Woo Themes Canvas, which was also trying to be a framework um, where you would, I mean, the idea was there was a basic theme there and that would allow you to do stuff. And then you would do the rest through child themes because when themes came out initially, I, I don't think in the first couple of years of me using WordPress, anybody ever said to me that a child theme is a good idea because no one was really expecting to do the kind of updates that we, we have these days. Yeah, yeah. I, I was yeah. curious as to what made, in your head, what made a framework a framework. What's what, what is the the key component of framework <laughs> that separates it from something else? Oh, have I uh, have I upset the apple cart here? <laughs> no, no. It's just that I've never been able to quite answer why. It call, I, I think it just sounds it's marketing. I think, but I mean, what really there wasn't much there with the genesis. I mean, it puts in. I guess a whole bunch of uh, hooks and filters or things that came in within that framework, something that we now expect to be in most themes, which probably wouldn't have been in the earlier themes. So I think that's the element, the fact that you can kind of hook in and develop around this basic theme. And, you know, m most of these, uh, Genesis and Canvas, it, it was up to you to then take that framework and then build your own themes over the top of it so you could often using a collection of their community snippets, you could build your own PHP templates and do much more with them. So I think right. you know, that was the, the route. And the route was then that you had this master theme, this framework, and then all your work. Child themes were no longer a place where you just put in a few tweaks to your CSS. You actually rebuilt, you know, the basic framework for Genesis was simple, very simple framework of CSS. And then all the work that you did was in the child theme. So it's kind of right. reversal to what most right. are now. No, um, so yeah, I think that's okay. probably why yeah. they called it that. But it's kind of pretensions, really. And I think you know the Woo themes canvas trying to compete with that. It kind of it was already out, and then it thought mm, framework sounds good. We'll go with that. <laughs> you know, I think. I see. So, yeah. do, do you feel um, that there's still life in this this idea of theme frameworks? Are these still a thing? Do you do you still take notice of all of this stuff? Obviously, Genesis has sort of, you know, been acquired and 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, but I think even from, you know, from the point of view, they've given it away, haven't they, Genesis? I think they've kind of bought the whole package of that theme as a basic starting point. But I think in the way they've retired um, a lot of those themes and they'll be block-based in the future anyway with their plans with them. So they'll be adopting Gutenberg. So I think in the way that I understood those frameworks, yes, that's dead. Um, but I think... Mm. I think, I could be wrong on this, but I think they kind of set this idea. Now we expect that we to have hookable areas in our themes where we can add in content. And I think it's yeah. that that wave of themes, those frameworks that brought in that concept, which has been taken on by um, the likes of, well, the next ones, the next category, our lightweight themes. People like Generate Press, perhaps Astra, the page builder framework, Hello for Elementor, and maybe Beaver Builder theme as well, which I use, um, may class as those. Basically, again, the same idea, aren't they? Um, it was it was interesting just just for a brief second going back to frameworks mm. um i i came to wordpress at a time when genesis was already out and so this whole hooks idea was was already a thing and uh-huh. and i i really didn't appreciate how kind of revolutionary it was at the time that you could you could do all these things and put things in different parts of the site and those people who used for example, Genesis seems to be the one that comes up in conversation all the time. It really mm. revolutionized the way that you could do things for the, for the first time with a, mm. let's call it copy and paste snippet of code. You could suddenly create layouts which were much mm. more complex and bespoke, and you could put this piece of content over here and this other piece over here, and it allowed you to to do things and feel like you were building a unique theme with just a few little copy and paste exercises. Really clever yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, it sounds a bit quaint now because when right. I think about it, you're, 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 well, most of what you were doing with Genesis was using widgets, you know, yes. and yes. you kind of had these little areas where you're slotting your WordPress widgets. And it really does seem kind of like silly now. And that's why I think they're kind of dead because obviously blocks are taking the place of what widgets used to do in Genesis. So it will be different. It's a different thing. But yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted. Yeah. You, you, you'd gone on to mention lightweight themes like uh, Generate Press, yeah. Astra, and so on. Yeah. So I think I think it's hard for anyone coming in now. I, I've seen a lot of people ask the questions about which themes, and they're, and they're trying to compare different types of themes. And I think those ones I mentioned are probably still in that tradition, as you say, where they at their core they keep it very lightweight very simple in fact they generally compete in to make them as lightweight as possible not adding in any javascript and have very minimal css to provide that basic framework and then mostly the rest is added in through add-ons that they add through their pro uh, pack versions of those but they're still very usable and they really don't carry by nature any support for other major plugins out there so they just stand alone as a basic uh, canvas really um, yeah and you know they allow you to use either gutenberg or page builders you know in the content area and and give you the basic things you might need over your styling such as being able to put your pages full width so you can accommodate a page builder but that's it that's all they do at, at their core so i yes. i see those as the lightweight themes and and of course you know they wander into the plugin territory with their add-ons Right. I, I, I kind of quickly settled, well, I say quickly, and we'll get into the like the mega themes a bit later and theme forest and all that. <laughs> Upon arriving at WordPress, I had a, had a brief foray with mega themes and, you know, very beguiled by all of that. Like I say, we'll come to that. Mm. But um, I quickly settled on the idea of using these lightweight themes fairly early on. And I just like the fact that there were a minimal selection of options and once i'd set them and i was familiar with where they all were i was happy and it got out of the way everything more or less everything that i added in as a plugin seemed to work and more importantly for me as soon as things like beaver builder began to become popular exactly as you say mm-hmm. they offered they offered the capability to essentially tick a box and mm-hmm. go full width and as soon as that was done the page builder could pretty much do anything you liked in the content area yeah yeah and i thought you know they are my favorites the lightweight themes as things stand as we are at the moment because i'm still a page builder user i think i always will be and i 
I want as you know minimal stuff as possible for I don't want to do many updates I want it to be as stable as possible so the idea that I can add in what I need as I need it so I'm drawn to these and I could easily move from any of these basic core ones because of the theme builder now is doing much of the major styling so I'll just right. use it for hey. my fonts yeah go on Yep, yep, fonts, basic styling and so on. I, I'm always curious as to what, what must be the... I don't really know how, how the, the developers of these, you know, so you've got Tom from Generate Press and you've got David from the Page Builder Framework and so on. It, it, must, be, it must be sort of difficult trying to separate yourself out in the marketplace and sort of illustrate why, why yours is, is better than the other rivals. I mean, I know that they're very friendly towards each other and they, they don't go into that whole flame wars nonsense, but it must be difficult yeah. to sort of say, well... Over here, we we do less of this, and well, over here we do less of this. We've got we've got way less over here than you have, um, which yeah. it is sort of like usually the opposite of marketing. It's more well, we've got more. We do all of this great stuff. Just curious as to how they how they see that. Yeah, well, they've gained a lot with the the promoting of the performance element of it. I yeah. think with many of those. Um, the interesting thing is when we go into what I'm, I guess, a new category, a more recent category. I'm calling multi-purpose themes, and I, I borrowed this actually from somebody else who did a video talking about one of these. And what I'm calling the so the examples would be Bloxy, Neve, Cadence. There's a few others out there which I'm forgetting one by. Oh, I forgot doesn't matter um but these are very similar i mean they're performant they sell themselves on that but also what's quite different about them is they're all available on the wordpress repository but they come in with support added in for major plugins uh, for e-commerce for learning management systems for a membership already packed into it which these other lightweight themes don't so they they're there in core they are multi-purpose and and i think what distinguishes these as well is the fact that they've Oddly, given most of these are quite new and we knew that the plan for Gutenberg is to kind of move away from the customizer, these have really gone to town on the customizer. So for all of these extras that they've got, these major plugins, yes, they've got support and styling for those in their customizer. I always find it interesting so, when you when you look at the promotional materials for these things and you you know you see that it supports this LMS and it supports this membership solution and so on. Mm. I always always think that must be a, a really difficult decision for them to make because what's popular today might not be popular in a couple of years time and so you know it's hard to yeah. it's hard to judge but also you are in a sense in a sense you're pushing away people who use a different lms because you've you've selected yeah. this one as your favored one and, and we're promoting that that's the one that we we combine with and everything just works out the box you're kind of pushing people away and saying well if you've got a different lms we're not suitable for you it, it just again just adds to complexity for the people trying to sell these things yeah and i I mean, I think these new page builders, they've really challenged. I mean, they are brilliant. I mean, if you're a new person, and you've got no coding skills and you, you're not going to touch CSS and you just want to get started quickly. I mean, Bloxy, Need and Cadence and all of these, they just make it so easy. You know, you can sort out your header and footer um, with its own, you know, way of being able to lay out things. I mean, that's something that I think Bloxy came up with. And, it, you know, it's stunning stuff. It's so easy to use. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and they're very performant in terms of their front end. So it's hard to, I think, distinguish these new wave from the lightweight themes, which they're also competing with. So you could very easily not see a difference between, say, uh, Cadence and Generate Press. But I think there is a massive one in the sense of uh, what it's aiming to do, you know, yeah. what the company behind it is. Tom's trying to keep it very lightweight and the, the Cadence is trying to keep it very... I believe, um, easy to use by non-coders. And yeah. I think, you know, it means that their decisions are entirely different. So I stay away from the multi-purpose themes because like you say, I think once they've added the support for a particular uh, LMS that they're going to, they can't kind of remove it, can they? It's there for all time and they might need to add. Yeah, they've got to, comes yeah. Out. Yeah, and it keeps yeah they've got to support a legacy. Out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and yeah, they have agreed. to keep updating for all of those. But otherwise, I mean, you know, it's not saying one's... It depends who you are. So if you're handy with a bit of CSS and you want to keep it simple, then you're definitely going to go the lightweight theme route. And if you, you don't have any of that and you want to make it quick and easy, you probably got to go to the multi-purpose theme side of it. But I think that the downside of that, even though it makes it a lot easier, is there's more to update. So potentially more things to go wrong. 
Right. Yeah. Good point. I mean, it's a fair def- it's a fair distinction. If you go for something which yeah. we've categorised as lightweight, you you probably have less to worry about in terms of updating yeah. and consistency and so on. But you also you don't have that supported, so you'll have to deal with that yourself. But if you go for one of these in inverted commas multi-purpose themes, a lot of that will be supported. But you're just going to have yeah. to hope that they support it forever. You know, if that's your if that's what you choose. Yeah. Yeah, and they'll keep increasing what they have to support, so it'll make it more difficult with the, you know, what they get back from the theme. So <clears throat> it's always been the way, isn't it? You know, the more you have to support, then the more difficult it is. You need to get the money back from it. So those simple themes, they're appealing as well, as long as they're still marketable to people, to me, you know, to keep things simple. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you know, that's a really interesting point, though, that you've just made, in that if if you are a uh, one of the lightweight theme developers... Um, you, you, you really have positioned yourself in the market as, you know, the, the less we do, the better, you know, if we can <laughs> yeah. make, make the file size half a kilobyte smaller, we've really succeeded. And, and they've made that their sort of badge of honor. It's their MVP. It's what they do. Whereas the other ones going in a different direction, you are, I think just by the fact that it does some of these things, you're maybe thinking that in the future it needs to do more of these things. And so there might be, there might be co- commercial pressure from their audience, their clients yeah, yeah. to add in extra things. Whereas the lightweight ones, the truly lightweight ones, the, 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 you, you would imagine that the, there's more pressure to to take out as much as possible and just just keep it as lean as possible and don't give in to the 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 people who are asking can it support this and can it support that so it's just a really different marketing strategy and probably a, a yeah. really different client base and a a bunch of you know the the audience that they've got are going to be asking for different things yeah I, I think so, yeah. And I think when they keep it simple and they're all about the code quality, then they're going to appeal to people like me. And, you know, I've got clients who don't expect to, their sites to disappear after a couple of years. They expect me to support it. And I, I earn from that, you know, for the next 10 years. So I, I'm going to lean to that because I'd rather spend a little bit of time, you know, maybe doing some things with CSS myself initially on the build and have little to update or worry about mm. as time goes on mm-hmm. but i can completely understand you know diyers want to move in you it's going to be so much easier <laughs> with block scene evil cadence and the other ones i forgot to mention yes yes um for sure okay specialist themes hmm. okay what were you thinking here <laughs> I was thinking, like WooCommerce, we have over on the theme forest side of things, Flatsome, which uh, I haven't used. No. I did. I did from a GPL club. Go and download it once to go and have a look at it. So, We're ending yeah, the podcast yeah, now, David. We're ending it now. <laughs> Contravening all the rules. Okay. I was just fascinated by it because, you know, it's got quite a good reputation. But I think why it has is because it was one of the... Uh, theme Forest has always been producing some themes specific to WooCommerce. But I think it was one that did it quite well and seemed to cover most people's needs and has been running for a long time. Of course, there is... The official WooCommerce um, theme, which is Storefront, which we don't really hear much about uh, these days, or at least in, not in our circles. Um, sorry, I mean, that's an interesting thing because of the fact what we just talked about, actually, with the multi-purpose themes. A lot yeah. of those themes now are adding all the support you need for that, particularly Astra, in what had classed as a lightweight theme, uh, has done a lot of support. So, But there are still the specialist ones. And then there are, of course, other things like directories and real estate and hotel bookings where you, you buy the th- usually on Theme Forest, but it, there, there's where it makes sense. I think for a theme to be the thing you buy and and then all the the stuff is added to it, particularly hotel bookings. I've talked about this before, where it's a real problem. If you drop, try and get a bookings plugin and you want to do the same thing you see on most of those where you're selling various different properties at different times, people expect to go to a front page and be able to do a search and it show what's available. Right. You can't do that without the theme and the plugin working together yes yeah yeah you're right it's a really it, there are clearly use cases where the the metaphor that i used at the beginning of mm-hmm. you know um plugins are for content and the way things mm-hmm. behave and themes are for the way things looks clearly this is a, like a nice little overlap uh, somebody's figured out that this functionality can only be achieved on the sort of theming level 
I think I think I, still I in think... still in my mind, it's it's it would be ideal if it could be done in another way. But obviously, you'd get you, you'd end up purchasing and installing two things, which is a bit of a, a kludge. But yeah, but this 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 whole area is, I feel, ripe for going wrong though. This this whole sort of specialist theme is is where you get the big mega themes that do everything, and they try to cram everything in, and the the overlap between oh the content and the the way it looks really are are all sort of muddled up, and it becomes difficult to know what's handling what. Yeah, I think so. But I think with the specialist themes, if you, I mean, if you do need to run the functionality that runs a a search or organizes thing as a directory, which is kind of more plug-in functionality, then you do need to have control over the styling and where that's right. positioned in there. And real estate is the same. It's got the same kind of search in. And I think it makes sense for, they are, aren't they? They're all in one package. They've got to start with a theme because you need one of those. So they do make sense. But like you say, let's move on to the next category, mega themes. <gasps> Good grief. Yeah. We were just looking at but the that, numbers on theme for us for the the one which seems to be the mega theme to end all mega themes, which I've never <laughs> used. It's called Avada. And yeah. man alive, is it still doing well? Yeah. Well, we, we mentioned this in one, of, and I can't remember which episode we were doing, what letter we were on, but we did, we were looking at the numbers and I remember that. Uh, I hope I'm not misremembering, but it was in the top five of most installed themes on WordPress from built with from their statistics. So it is big. We just don't know about it often in our communities because yeah, we, we tend to be based around what's in the WordPress repository most of the time. So well, yeah. just to give you some sort of impression of what this is, it's seven hundred and seven hundred plus thousand installs and every single one of that well i'd say every single one clearly there's people who will figure out how to jailbreak <laughs> it if you like but um they're all paid for every single one mm. of them comes with a 60 dollar license i don't know how that licensing works whether it's an annual thing or my, my understanding when i last looked was that you paid it once and you got support and updates for a limited period of time with an extra sort of 20 dollar add-on or something but um you know that's a very profitable business. They're they're turning over about two and a two point two thousand licenses a month, so it's an mm. incredibly profitable enterprise. But um, mm. we we had a look and we we kind of couldn't work out um, how how you would actually use it. It's got this great promotional stuff about all the wonderful things that it can do, <laughs> but we couldn't see how how you would actually manage that because. The, uh, the advertising material didn't really show us, but just goes to show I had kind of assumed that Theme Forest wasn't wasn't doing as well as it once was purely because of where I've now got, but I, I'm totally wrong. <laughs> theme Forest, if you are in the top two or three or four themes, it's an incredible marketplace still. Yeah, and we got, yeah, Enf Enfold, B theme and bridge are some of the big ones, aren't they? That yep. I, I see a lot of people in, uh, you know, m more I see in the Beaver Builder community, but I see a lot of people who have come from those um, to Beaver Builder later, and that's been their routine. And I think those mega themes on Theme Forest are very attractive because they let the DIYer get everything for this one price for their single site for life. You know, it's yeah. sixty dollars yep. or whatever. And well, you can see I mean, how attractive it is. Yeah, you say everything. I mean, they they, they are very good at claiming. To to do everything aren't they and, <laughs> and of course i'm sure that like my brief foray i mentioned at the beginning mm. that i i fiddled around with these i downloaded a few of them and paid for them and put them on some websites but but quickly ran into the limitations that i really had no idea how to modify the things you know you get a portfolio yeah, yeah. but you can't really do much of it with it except add portfolio content pieces and you know yeah. you click save and it displays itself on the site but if you want to modify that or change it all of that was off limits and you needed to sort of dig into the weeds so they they promise a lot and i'm sure they deliver a lot but i think the difficulty comes when you assume it can do everything and then quickly realize there's a lot more to it than that yeah yeah absolutely well i you know oddly i went the light theme route. And then at a certain point, I thought, oh, I need to jump on board with these mega themes. They're so appealing. I'm going to try and do this. And I remember trying to rebuild an e-commerce shop with it. And it was just, oh, it was so, it was so painful um, because it got so heavy with 
all the PHP functionality that went there. I think, you know, you you mentioned, and it doesn't seem to be on Theme Forest X theme, they've got their own page builder, haven't they, included yes. in theirs as called well? Cornerstone, so, I think it is, yeah. Y- yes, and um, so I think probably a lot's changed, but my what I worry about with these is that they are competing for top place by offering more than the next person. And because you're only paid this one lifetime payment, there has to be a point where if sales slow down, then you've added so much that the maintenance or the expectation of the maintenance is going to increase and the money coming in is going to decrease. So they end up, you know, folding in the end. And that's been my previous experience with the mega themes. I bought a load of them from Theme Forest. I think all of them have now expired, which is not the case with the themes I've bought. But maybe not the case with these ones. These have been around a long time, haven't they, Avada? Well, I don't know how the the star rating system or the the comments and reviews and all of that work on Theme Forest, but the the, the ones that have pushed ahead and have got the most installs, the ones that you mentioned, they, Mm. they have very positive comments and i'm just guessing it's it's we're just dealing with a different audience aren't we There's, these are people yeah. who just want to put a site up install a theme um activate the theme and then crack on and whatever modifications come with it that's fine that's that's as much as i want to <laughs> modify it and i'm entirely happy with it but of course that's not you because you are you are building websites for people and you you want really fine and granular control of it and so this stuff just starts to get in the way whereas the lightweight themes they get out of your way and you can build on top of that because you've got the experience but but clearly huge market they're satisfying people because the the ratings are good it's it's just not the market for you but you know here's the thing and it's it's kind of a, a moment of embarrassment for me so one of the mega themes that was building this e-commerce site with i installed it and i got really almost to the end almost ready to go live with it and i gave it a five-star review i thought it was just fabulous i thought it did all this stuff it looked beautiful i hardly had to do any work Uh, (laughs) and it was only when i kind of realized you know how slow it was that i started to unpick things and just some small (laughs) things i needed to do before i went live and then i couldn't unpick it and there was so many files and that's the thing you know but i got to that point where i i really did think it was quite marvelous and i gave it a five star rating it was just (laughs) you know those things came later so i imagine when i look at those five stars i can understand why they've come in but I, i would it would be interesting if they were forced to always have to um, star rate something after it had been on a live site for six months, and then I yeah. wonder how it would look then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a c- couple of things from that. Firstly, I'd be really curious if anybody who's building client sites uses Theme Forest yeah. as a... I'd be really curious if anybody actually does that and uses those and deploys them and is entirely satisfied. Maybe you've got a, a real niche that that it works with. I don't know. So, you know, put something in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and actually, you know what? We, we, we it happens all the time, and I do it. But almost tarring um, theme forest as a marketplace has been associated totally with these type of themes. So, <clears throat> going back to an earlier theme, uh, I know your thoughts on this one. I bought a very well coded knowledge based theme from um, Theme Forest again, which was just perfect for what I needed beautifully done really lightweight and in, in every way i looked at the code and thought this is marvelous work so everybody on theme forest isn't really someone who's just packing full of features so yeah no and and if you're a budding developer of themes it strikes mm. me you'd be a bit negligent at the outset to just discount yeah. it out of hand it must be a lot of mm. hard work for for the likes of you know, David Von Grease, Page Builder Framework, and Tom Osborne, Generate mm. Press, to, to establish themselves. And a quick route to doing that is to is to try and do it all all through a, a marketplace like Theme Forest. And yeah, clearly, yeah, a lot of people yeah. doing it. Yeah, we've got some brilliant developers, haven't we? We've, got, we've managed to make it. Uh, they, they needed to go there just to get the audience in the first place for, you know, their skills. So, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I, anyway, I felt I just needed to say that because it sounded like we was kind of, Bad mouth in everything that's on theme forest. Well, I think I think we did. We we did a we did a we did a sort of <laughs> attack job, and then we just walked it back, didn't we? Right at the end, <laughs> we did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Last category. Um, well, we can't talk about this much, which is really themes for full site editing with blocks, which really there isn't anything at the moment, and it's no. still experimental, isn't it? So 
Yes, uh, got- there's a lot of people, you know, for example, Justin Tadlock on WP Tavern, fiddling with these things, experimenting with these yeah. things, and thankfully writing up their findings. But it, it, it hasn't transferred to me yet. I haven't been playing with this sort of stuff, but obviously this is the future, but it's still very, very much experimental. Uh, you've written down TT1 blocks, block base, Q, and Hansen. But regrettably, yep. I just don't have a lot to say about them yet and what I think the benefits might be or the drawbacks. No, I've seen some people on videos um, doing some early work on it, really before the last release and full site editing came out. So it was interesting. So it's still a bit quirky then. So it, it's now up to the marketplace to see if it adopts it because these are really just, you know, just tools to experiment and see where it goes from there. At the moment, there's no adoption, so there's not much to talk about. So the concern for that going forwards and the fact they've got to spend time learning a new skill and and yet they're still unclear about how things are going to work in the future. It, it's it's really difficult. But it I kind of feel, you wait, we'll play this episode back in a couple of years and I'll be totally wrong. I, I feel that the theme is becoming less important over time. I think there's an expectation, which if you've gone the plug-in route, you're uh, certainly a page builder and certainly the way that Gutenberg appears to be going in a similar way that the theme builder and the global styling will be taken care of by the same, effectively the same platform. Um, that it, yeah. I can understand where David is. He doesn't know where he stands. But then that's the, the same thing with Gutenberg. It's a challenge to everybody, the page builders and the people creating the themes because no one knows how all-encompassing that might be and what role you will have within this ecosystem any longer. And I think that's the difficulty. Right. Well, we don't want to end, <laughs> it, on a, don't want to end it on too much of a positive, uh, negative note. Is there anything we've got that's good, that's good to say? We've spent <laughs> the last 20 minutes like morning, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm really quite positive about um, how it is because, I mean, I don't think there's ever been a time where I have felt like I've had all the tools that I've needed and I do feel like that. I mean, you know, my going back over my history, it's really poor. Now I feel fairly confident I can build what I need to do. Now it's not necessarily the Gutenberg route, but it's still the, the WordPress route. So I'm, you know, quite happy and I'm quite happy with my themes as well. The other, the other thing is we've never really had so much choice, I don't think. There's just so many <laughs> yeah. options, which is a sort of a double-edged sword. You know, if you are in the market for a theme or some kind of theme-type functionality, there is just so many different routes. You know, WordPress as a, as a marketplace, let's call it, is growing year on year. And, and so there is just so many to choose from. It's a double-edged sword. It's nice to have so much choice, but equally it's difficult to decide. But you've never had it better. There are lots and lots of routes to go down. And it's, it, I've decided what my route is for now, but it's up for yeah. grabs in the, in the next year or two, depending on the way the wind blows. So it's exciting <laughs> times. Okay, we've, we've managed to pull it round. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the interesting thing, I think, is that, we don't know where it's going to go, but there is the choice. And I, I do feel, you know, when you talk about themes, I mean, I've got my favorite thing, but th- the only people who are concerned, I suspect, are people like me who have to support clients and I make my money through maintaining their site. So I need some stability. Mm, mm, but for mm. other people, it is a wonderful thing because, you know, I, I simply would recommend now um, in the same way that you could build a directory if you wanted with Beaver Builder and Beaver Thema. But most of the time, I'll probably go, go and take a look at the directory themes that are out there, you know. And if somebody doesn't have kind of any CSS skills, not interested and wants to build their headers and footers and look nice quickly, I, I wouldn't be using Bloxy Neve or Cadence, but I would be recommending it to other people. So I do like that choice, you know, that, that we do have out there. And yeah, and it, that's a really good point. It depends what your level of expertise, what amount of time you've got available to you, how long you've got to watch YouTube to- tutorials about CSS and so on. There's a <laughs> yeah. there's a solution out there for you. It might be that you just need to click install and activate and you're done. That's everything you need if you're happy with that outcome. And we only got morbid a little bit about the, the fear of t- change and where that's going to go. But I think mm. ultimately the choices that are available to people out there will win out. It's what people want and where they'll put their money and what they'll actually use, which will determine um, where we go forward. So good point. Okay, so themes... Themes are done. We're done with themes for this this week. We're done with yeah. themes. Okay. They don't exist any longer. We'll no, no, to, we've, that's we, it. If yeah, we ever yeah, do this again, yeah. we won't have to find a new T. <laughs> it's good. T is for 
who knows what T is for. Let's not go into that. But what's next? Uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, oh, t- to you, you. you. It's for undo. So we'll next week, next in a couple of weeks, probably, we'll be uh, talking about getting out of trouble. Resets, revisions, child themes, bugs and conflict finding, that kind of stuff. We really did scrape the barrel trying to find you to train <laughs> you as for undo. Genius. It gets, it gets, Genius. It gets much worse as we go through the I know, the we're, on to the, we're on to the horrible end of the alphabet. Oh, if anybody's <laughs> sticking with us, congratulations. You deserve a badge. We'll be back. Um, yes. We'll be back. We'll be back. Uh, but uh, that was lovely. Thank you, David. Uh, yeah, take care. Have a nice week. Yeah, bye-bye. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that episode. Very nice chatting to David Wormsley. He's always a mine of useful information, in this case, all about themes. Did we get it right? Did we get it wrong? Did we miss a whole load of things out? It's been very nice. Quite a few of you have been emailing me lately with your opinions on our content, and I really appreciate it. Whether it's saying how great you think it is, or you're just saying you missed the target completely there, that's fine. Email me. I'm completely happy to reply to anybody who corresponds, or perhaps you'd just like to leave a comment. You can do that on our Facebook group, Find the Post. This is number 247, or you could do it at the bottom of the post on the wpbuilds.com website. Okie dokie. That is all we've got for you this week. We will be back next Monday for the This Week in WordPress show, and we'll be back on Thursday for another podcast all about WordPress. So it only remains for me to say, I hope you have a nice week. Stay safe. Bye-bye for now. Oh, oh, and I think this might very well be the cheesiest music that we've ever had. I'm going to fade it in and uh, you're not going to get to the end of this. 